And we are live for the second game of this doubleheader as your Central Wyoming wrestlers will take on the Lancers of Eastern Wyoming. Wyatt Bridge could join alongside John Gabrielson here. It's the 20th meeting between these two teams. Central is up 14 to five. Central has won three of the last four, but right now Central's on a two game losing streak conference opener. Or Eastern is on a two game winning streak. Yeah, they are tops in the conference right now. They knocked off, I think, who thought People would be the favorite. That's Western Wyoming, and they did that at Torrington. Then picked up a win against Northwest. They're 2-0. Central losing to LCCC and then to Casper. 0-2 on the other side. In a minute, you'll hear in the pregame show Coach Schmidt talk about a little bit of a turnaround for his team from last week to this week. We'll see if it comes to fruition. Yeah, Eastern Wyoming 12-9 and the season. They have a three-game winning streak. 3-5 three and five on the road. Central 4-2 and two at home, but last home game that we saw, it was kind of the bigger person won that game, it seemed like. Yeah, bigger as in uh, stature, of course. They're talking about the 6'10", 6'8", front line of LCCC that decimated Central on the rebounding. Coach Schmidt will talk about that in the pregame uh, as well. And then uh, they were pretty cold from the arc in the second half as well were the rustlers, and that can't happen at home if you're going to expect to be successful as well. Yeah, and with the thing... You this is going to be weird. A lot of freshmen, there's one sophomore that I have on this official roster, John, and most of these guys are two years, but right. um, they are designated as freshmen, and we have nine minutes to go in this game. We're going to send it to a break here. We got coach interview with Brad Schmidt. John got that for you guys. You're listening to Wrestler Radio on 88.1, streaming at WrestlerAthletics.com.
back here on 88-1. I want to thank Brad Schmidt again for taking time to talk with us. And we actually got to talk a little bit with the Eastern Wyoming coach. And he came in, and, well, he's been with Eastern Wyoming, but he's taken over the men's program in aug late August. Yeah, he's been the head women's coach since they brought basketball back, much like Central did a year before Central did in 2007. He's been the head coach up until last year, 14 seasons. And then uh, they had coach Tim Mosier left late, uh, mid, mid to late August. And his assistant, Coach Hawkins, uh, took over the women in an interim basis. He's taken over the men on an interim basis. I asked him, I said, uh, well, you're the athletic director. Do you get to choose <laughs> which one you want? And he said, oh, we've got a lot of things to sort out right now. So uh, just playing for the season, Coach Tom Anderson, the head men's coach, at least for this year, and doing well leading the conference right now. Uh, there you see him in the middle of your screen if you're watching this and his uh, assistant. So uh, they kind of assistant for each other as well. So he's kind of her assistant assistant even after she was his assistant on the women's side and then she assists him on the other bench there Tom Anderson at uh, the uh, head coach of the Eastern Wyoming College Lancers and maybe that's a good thing John when you have being able to coach both teams and just kind of know how each system works and and who knows what could this lead to I mean they beat Western Wyoming in a very very competitive game 70 to 67 the final score to open up their conference season and just a good game, and I hope to see a good game here. Right, and you look at the roster, and they're all, like you mentioned in the onset, freshmen, but they're second-year freshmen due to the COVID year and, and things along that nature. And uh, he's 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 liking coaching the guys, and like I said, he's having fun right now. I mean, their, their record not sparkling 12-9, and nine, but uh, the 2-0 and o on the conference side certainly helping make up for that right now. And let's get to your starting lineups here. We'll start with Eastern. Wyoming College, you got Tom Mark from Belgium. He is their leading scorer, averaging 14 points a game, grabbing almost 10 boards. He's almost averaging a double-double, so a potential player to look out for. You got Quincy Taylor from Sacramento, California, a freshman, 6'2", averaging 13.1 points per game. You got Matthew Veen, who is a freshman from Colorado, 7.4 points per game. You got Caden Tolson from Idaho Falls, Idaho, averaging 13.4 points per game. And then you have... Enzo Yuri from France averaging 5.8 per game. And we'll move to the Central Wyoming starters as John will have that for you. Looking at your Central starters tonight. Number one, a 6'1 sophomore out of Portland, Oregon. Averaging just under 20 points per game. A couple boards, 83% free throw shooter is Jesse White. Wearing number four, the headband back on him tonight for at least a while. The 6'5 sophomore averaging 12 points from Newburgh, Oregon. That is the only rustler to start all of their games. That is Jack Klumach. Also getting the start tonight, number 11 out of Lander Valley High School, the 6'6 sophomore, Niehi Black Bear, 9 points, 5 rebounds per ball game. Number 13, uh, excuse me, 14, Saul May, 6'7", freshman out of Manchester, England. Saul averaging 4 points, 3 boards per ball game, Saul May. And number 32, a 6'6", sophomore out of Lakewood, Ohio, averaging 11 points, 71% from the free throw line with 4 rebounds a game is Nate Mims. They'll be dressed in their all orange unis tonight with black accents and the black numbers. Head coach Brad Schmidt in his fourth season, assisted by Sam Harrison. Yeah, that's the second time I've seen these uniforms come out. Not too bad. It's kind of a weird thing. You usually see them in white or black, yeah, but you usually see three, got that orange. three colors. Exactly. And with that headband, like you brought up, it was a knot that Jesse White had on his head that Jack, made the foul. Jack Klumach. Or, yeah, excuse me, Klumach. Excuse me about that. And that's why the refs noticed the knot, and it's like, you got to take that off. Well, and I asked him tonight, I said, headband? He said, it's coming back. He just might have <laughs> to disguise the knot in his hair a little bit better. But uh, that uh, he is going to have a headband on. I think Jesse White has a small headband on as he comes out in the starting lineups here tonight. Yeah, you just kind of see it in his hair. Jack, yeah. Jack the Samurai. Yeah, it's the ninja knot, I guess, or the ninja headband is what <laughs> professional basketball calls it. At least in the NBA. I don't see a knot or a ninja kind of style look, so maybe it's a normal headband. We'll find out. Well, I, I, I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's perfectly legal, and here it is. So we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll knock on wood right now. I mean, it took the refs until the second half to see that here. You got an update, John. Yeah, one other game going on in the region tonight as uh, the other one will play tomorrow. But uh, LCCC out in front of Casper very early in that game, two and a half minutes in at Cheyenne. LCCC up five to two. Right now, like I said, that one very early tonight. The women did not play. That game was postponed. Then Western Wyoming will uh, host Northwest College tomorrow evening 
as games are spread out in the Region 9. So Yeah, and it's the 29th, I th believe, this Saturday. or Yeah, this Saturday, it's going to be Western Wyoming at home to take on Central, which that might be a good game, too. I mean, and then all February 2nd, they'll be at Northwest, and then February 4th, they'll make up that Air Force prep game from way earlier in yeah, three games in four or five days wednesday thursday friday so yeah three games in four days next week because i do a little quick math yeah he black bear to jump for central tom mark to jump for eastern it's gonna be controlled by the lancers as you're gonna see yori take the ball he's gonna hand this off to tolson tolson guarded by may will whiz this out to mark mark gives this out nice there lay up there from Veen. good pass there to get the game started yeah got good position on klumach and just point blank knocks her down it's gonna be white taking it over center court he's guarded there by yuri here klumach gets a screen from the black bear is it's gonna be stolen there by mark and here's an opportunity dunk is good there by Mark, who is their leading scorer. Well, you've given up an easy layup, then you give up a turnover that leads to a dunk. Not a good start for the home team. But just under a minute into this new ball game here, Klumach going to get into the post, kicks this out to Mims. Mims, top of the arc, will pass this to White. White, back back to Mims. He's going to cross court pass. That's going to be stolen there by the Lancers, and that's a good steal, but... Looked like it got kicked out, and it's going to be an easy bucket there for the Lancers. I thought that was a kicking violation and a quick timeout right away. Yeah, that was a nice kind of a little one-timer soccer move that gets booted up there by Tom Mark, and Brad Schmidt calls a quick early timeout. That was a pretty good telegraphed pass out there, and I don't mean that in a good way. That was a, a telegraphed pass that came over there from Mims and got red and picked off and taken the other way. Yeah, just good hustle there as Brad took a 30-second time out there as the Lancers already a quick 6 nothing ball game. Don't forget wrestler basketball brought to you in part by Fremont Beverage Pepsi. Longtime supporters of kids and sports in Fremont County and Central Wyoming. Your Pepsi scoreboard. 8.49 to go in this first half again. Ben's game only two halves as Klumak goes for the layup. No good. Rebounded there by Niehi Black Bear. No good. May almost gets it but Niehi Black Bear gets it. Here's a two point shot. That's in and good. Get the game started there for the Rustlers as Leahy Black Bear gets the rebound put back. And here's Mark, kicks this out to Tolson. Tolson will keep it, now kick it back to Taylor. Taylor, here's a three-point shot. It goes in and out, no good, and rebounded there by May. As the Rustlers will push the pace just a little bit. White drives in, kicks this to Black Bear. Black Bear, another two points, that's good. Night pass there by Jesse White. Two boards, two buckets for Black Bear. As Gia entered the game for the Rustlers, as you're gonna see Veen gives this to Mark. Mark drives in, nice ball movement there as he was kind of swooping it around, I guess is the way to put it there, John. Yeah, May came out to challenge the shot. I maybe would rather see him plant his feet outside that arc and take a charge on that instead of going after that as he did and allowing the layup. As Clue Mock, top of the arc at the far side of the court. Gonna That's try to get in, here's Black Bear. Black Bear reverse, no good, gets his own rebound, but loses it, Gia will get the rebound for the quarter three. Here's Gina with a floater, no good. Rebounded there by Taylor. You got Mark, gets a nice forward court pass there and misses the layup, rebounded there by Black Bear. Four boards already for Black Bear. Gia gives this to White. White drives in, kicks this out to Klumach. Klumach, here's a three-point shot, no good, misses everything, and then you have a foul called. Well, Jack, I think, was afraid. He, I think, not sure if he knew where he was on the court. He kept his back foot up in the air almost toe that he didn't put his heel on the sideline. They're going to give a foul on Central on this play. It's going to go against Black Bear. Try to keep curious to know. The ref gave the pushing sign, yeah, but on, I... On the rebound, apparently. And it's going to be Lancer basketball up by four with 17-11 to go. Veen drives in, tries to go for a two-buck there by Saul May. Shot by Saul. As Gia brings it over center line. Gives this to, Clu or excuse me, gives this to White. White, two-point shot, no good. Wow. Hits the backboard. Central, I hate to say this, that they're ice cold to start the game. That, honestly, it wasn't even close, unfortunately. And it's, he's not the only one to do that so far in Orange. Here's a three-point shot by Mark. Is no good. Rebounded there by Klumach. Klumach will give this to May. May had a wide open lane and was trying, I think, looking for Black Bear and some Lancers getting in the way of it. It's going to be staying with 
the wrestlers. Boy, Veen went down hard as he crashes to the ground. No foul call, just out of bounds as Trey Sims enters the central lineup. 6'5", sophomore out of Ogden, Utah, number 13. Averaging just about three points a game this season. And it's it going to be a yeah, back another to back. foul. <laughs> back to back on Veen. Well, the last one wasn't a foul on Veen. This one is a foul on Veen. And now you're going to see the Lancer check in. That is, if I, gotta, I got to get this right, John. <laughs> Ivkovic. I believe I said yeah, that correctly. Nik there we go. Nikola Ivkovic. If talking with Tom Anderson is brought fruitful for us. Sims with a three, no good as Ikovic is from Serbia, and that is a dunk there by Mark. That was just a quick outlet pass out there on the rebound by Taylor and an easy bucket, too easy. Klumak gives this to Sims, right back to Gia. And you can see Sebastian Gaza come in the next dead ball. Klumak give this to White. White tries to go baseline. Doesn't get it though, we'll kick it right back to Nahi Blackbird who just hands it right back to White. Here's a nice two point layup, no good. That is a vintage Jesse White move, just not a finish. Ikovic for three, no good, and it's gonna be with the wrestlers with 15.53 to go. Gia drives in, he's gonna go for a two point shot, no good, he's gonna go for the charity stripe though and get some two points. Yeah, Toldson or Ivkovic both in the area, and they'll go Toldson his first. Gonna be the team's second foul as I accidentally turned myself off there. Practice, John. Practice makes perfect. Here. It does. Repetition. You see Coach Schmidt in the middle of your screen with three fresh wrestlers getting set to come in. One of them, Jacob Maddox, and the other, Sebastian Gaza. And Mims coming in, too. Nate back in. First shot for Gia is good. Uh, talking with Coach Schmidt, Gia was going to get some more minutes tonight, so we'll see how he takes advantage with that. If that first one goes in. Gia on the season, shooting about 73% from the free throw line. White, Klumach, and Black Bear, the three that come out of the wrestler lineup. Second shot coming as you see Yuri exit the game. Coming in for, is Frederick for the Lancers. Five point ball game. Gia to make it a four point ball game here if he makes it. It's up, hits the rim, goes in. And it's Lancer basketball up by four. 10-6 on your Pepsi scoreboard with 15-45 to go. Well, not bad for Central. They're only two of 10 from the field, but still only trail by four points right now. Yeah, the last game, they were pretty good in that first half. Last home game, actually, they were good in that first half. Again, like you mentioned, John, earlier, cold in that second half. And you're going to get an offensive foul there by Mark as he is playing some aggressive basketball, and that one comes to bite him. First turnover of the game by the Lancers on the... Offensive foul by Tom Mark. As you're now going to see the Lancers put some pressure on these wrestlers as Jacob Maddox brings it up court. Over center court, we'll give this to Gia. Gia going to pass it to Mims. Mims tries to make a move, he does. We'll kick it out to Maddox. Max, here's a three point shot. That's it and good. Big bucket for the Everett Washington sophomore. And it's a one-point ball game with 15 to go. Ivikovic gives this off to Taylor. Apologize for the mispronunciation there as Mark tries to drive in on Gaza. Thought about a shot, doesn't take it though as Frederick gets the ball. You kind of just see how much longer and bigger stature physically they just throw it away that time that Eastern is then Central. Kind of like L Triple C was but maybe not to the height degree. And John, as Central has the ball, I see uh, Joseph Fountain, three point here by Gia, no good, rebounded by Gaza. Gaza puts it in and good for two. I don't know if you noticed this, but Fountain is wearing the, the ninja headband <laughs> from <laughs> the last game it looks like. First lead of the game for Central. Approaching 14, 15 to go. Taylor. Guarded by Max, we'll get this off to your, or excuse me, that's Tolson. These are minutes for Central that's gonna define more playing time as Frederick launches a try that doesn't go. Rebounded there by Gaza, it's a missed three. Like, this is a get it right week for the wrestlers, as Schmidt put it, as Mims tries to kick it for two, no good. Gaza tries to go for the rebound, but Mark will come down with it. Central with the lead, still despite shooting 29%, and a kick. 
will be a turnover on Eastern. Their third turns it back over to the Rustlers. And you're seeing Mark kind of talk about it. They hit the foot, and anytime you see the ball hit the foot, it's probably an automatic call right there. Christopher Salmas back uh, in for the first time. Enzo Yuri back in. Marco Kurtinik into the ball game for Eastern Wyoming. Coach yes. Anderson patrolling the sideline with the referee, bending his ear a bit now as Central looks to expand a one-point advantage. Maddox will give this to G, who gives this right to Mims. Mims going to go baseline. Here's a layup. Misses everything. I think that got either tipped or just wasn't able to make the connection as Lance just pushed it up. It is a two-point shot. Almost missed that. Was Tolson, but he somehow got that in. Yeah, he takes it coast to coast, and then Mims is out of bounds when he gets the ball and take off that three, and that'll be the third turnover by Central. As now... It's a Lancer lead, 12-11 on the Pepsi scoreboard with 13.25 to go. White and May return, Gia and Sims out for Central. As the wrestlers are gonna put some full court pressure here. As that's, White gets that almost stolen there from Yuri. Yuri trying to make something happen, we'll get to Samus. Samus right back to Yuri. Kicks this out, and now you have a travel call by the Lancers as Ikovic travels there. Trading turnovers, kind of like service errors in volleyball. I say come in pairs, so do turnovers, it seems like. So far in this game, you are correct, John, as it's still 12-11 on the scoreboard. Wyatt trying to bring it up as Yuri puts some pressure, gets it over the CWC logo. Lancers, by the way, back up by one. Seven minutes gone by. Here's a three-point shot, and it's going to be a call on the Rustlers. Yeah, Gaza on the offensive side away from the basketball. Oh, it is on Gaza. His first team's second, really? All right. Second called on Central. Fourth turnover, though, on CWC, unfortunately. Still 12-11, and now you're seeing both teams put some pressure here. As Yori gets it over center line, guarded by Maddox. Gives this to Kretinik. Kretinik to Yori, back to Kretinik, and it's no good, and a foul call, and now you're gonna get a word from Schmidt, but he holds it in and <laughs> just talks to himself. Well, Gaza, I don't think, needed to go after that as White kind of, I mean, and it's, it's such a bang-bang reaction play, but White pretty much had him tied up and had him going nowhere, and then all of a sudden Sebastian comes in and takes him out a little bit and gets called for the foul. His second, team third, as Klumach and Black Bear tried to check in. The referee says, uh, wait till after the free throw. Yeah, as Schmidt is talking to one of the officials, I think the official is just kind of trying to explain what he saw on that play. That first shot there from Kretinik is no good. And the Lancers 0 for 1 right now at the free throw line. Who are correct. You do, this is a great stat sheet, John. I appreciate that. Yeah, well, I'll do what I can for you. Learn and adapt as that second one from Kutenik is good, and it's a 13-11 ball game. White gets crossed midcourt and almost loses it. It's going to stay with Central as a tip there from Yuri hits it out of bounds. Biggest lead has been six. By the Lancers, correct, John? Yes. As Klumach will get the inbound. Guarded by two Lancers, but now backs off. Lancers in a man-to-man -man defense. Central working on three minutes without a bucket right now. White makes a move, kicks this out to May. May makes another move, tries to drive in. He has a wide open layup. Is that good? It gets tapped in. Basket interference, but they're going to wave it off because it was touched by Central as Saul May. That could have gone either way, I think. You had both. You had a wrestler and a Lancer both going for that, and both touched it, but... I'm curious, does that go as a turnover then? Or, You'd have to or think. a missed shot? You would have to think there as here is Yuri tries to kick it out to Kurtenik. Kurtenik gives it to Yuri and another turnover. It's going to be on Yuri. I'm assuming he, well, yeah. he stepped out of bounds as what happened. He stepped out of bounds and came back in and was the first to touch the ball. I thought there was going to be a foul call, but not the case. They <laughs> say that he was out of bounds. You can hear the referee explain it to him. Yeah, Schmidt, he thought it was a foul on Central, or either that or was almost agreeing with it's called White. Here's a long three. That's good! Long distance dedication. As that's the first point for Jesse White on the night. 14-13 on the Pepsi scoreboard. 
Thomas drives in, gets the, gets the two-point layup. Nobody got in his face. Fifth lead change of the game now at 15, 14, 11, 29 left. First half, Pepsi scoreboard. And how about another three? No good there. Rebounded there by Kretinik. As now you have Samus brings it up. He's going to give this to Kretinik. Nice move there from Kretinik just to get the ball moved over and good, get that easy layup. Good find, though, by Samus, who was in the air and found him on a double clutch. As Klumok will give this to Mims, trailing by three. Mims, here's a two-point shot. Long two, no good there. Kretinik with the rebound. Yeah, nobody home to rebound. As Samus will bring it up court. Central has out-rebounded Eastern early 10-8 right now. Kretinik gives this screen for Samus. Samus guarded by Klumok as Central makes a switch. Kretinik in the post, tries to back up on Klumok. It's a mismatch there. Nate Blackbear tries to make an interference on that shot and does. And it's going to stay with the Lancers as looked like May went for the rebound and just couldn't get it. Yeah, he was way high for the rebound, just couldn't control it. And out of bounds it will go, it will stay. Lancer basketball, got some subs all the way around. Gia back into the contest. Klumok back in for Central. Approaching almost the halfway point in this first half with 10.36 to go, 17.14 in favor of the Lancers. Stealth headband still legal, 10 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, it took to the midway second <laughs> half when they found that out, John. And maybe that's the stat we look for. There's a three there by wow. Samus. That's ice water in your veins when you do that little shake and bake and then just launch it from three feet behind the line. Great shot by Salmas. Yeah, great shot there as the Central now trailing by six. Gia, baseline is good! Nice take by Tony Gia. Gia tying as a scoring high with Black Bear, both of them with four in this game. Ten minutes to go in half number one. Gratinic tries to put some pressure on Klumok as now you got a baseline drive here and it's going to be foul on Black Bear as you have Melisic. Mela Melisic. Melisic, excuse me. Thank you, John. It's, yeah, a lot of these names are pretty unique as far as everything goes. And a break here, and I think it's immediate timeout. And we will take one with them. You're listening to Rustler Radio on 88-1, 2016 in favor of the Lancers with under 10 to go. left to play first half from Rustler Jim. The visitors out in front, 20 to 16. Going on in Cheyenne, LCCC has a 31-18 lead on the Casper Thunderbirds. Up to the 10 minute mark, Central 30% from the floor, six of 20. They did uh, two of six from the arc, two of two from the line. Eastern Wyoming right now, nine of 16 from the field, 56%. One of six from the arc, and I believe one of two that is. Had to move a check mark there. Uh, nine points off the bench for Central. Eight points off the bench right now for the Lancers. As Melisic is at the free throw line, first one is good. Melisic on the season, 75%. And what a weekend Fremont County's going to have, John. You got Ronthon, Central basketball on Saturday when they take on Western Wyoming. Got Lander Tiger. You got a lot of Fremont events happening here. Second shot is good. Had the big Lander-Riverton rivalry games that they split. Ladies winning from Lander and the boys winning from Riverton High. Keeper of the gold trophy going to those two teams as you have the wrestlers down by six with under 10 to go. See a former Wolverine out there right now and Jared Lucas on the low block. As Klumach tries to go for the shot, foul occurs first with 12 on the shot clock. Resets it to 20 though. Two on Veen, four on the Lancers. As you just saw Taylor try to take a couple <laughs> practice shots, went 0 for 2 there. <laughs> Referee talking with Ian Veen down there underneath. Wondered why the hoop mic was going off with sound while play was stopped, but now I know. As now Central with the basketball as Maxwell inbound this to May. 
Maybe we'll have to bring it out just a little bit as he will look for Klumok. Klumok to Maddox as he'll give it right back to Gia. May, back to Klumok, kind of just passing on top of the arc right now. Shot clock down to seven. Klumok looks at it, five seconds on the shot clock. Klumok for two, that's good. Patented little floater, one hand flip in the lane. Klumok with his first bucket of the night, down by four. 18 to 22 on the Pepsi scoreboard in favor of the Lancers. Here is an opportunity here for the Lancers to get two, and they will take it. Tolson with the layup. Over the top of Jared Lucas, who played pretty good defense down there, but Central's full court pressure not netting a turnover and instead gives up a fairly easy bucket on the other side. May tries to go baseline, almost steps out and will save it as it's going to be stolen there by Taylor. Taylor guarded by Maddox and a foul as Taylor will go to the free throw line. Good job by Jacob to not give up the easy bucket that way. Taylor 72.9% on the season free throw line as you can really count that 73 as he'll try to extend this lead to eight. With 8.47 left to go, 24-18 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Taylor with two points, looking for points three and four. First shot off the front of the rim and no good. And you're going to see Mims enter the game for May. And so I'm trying to see who that foul, they had a double zero. I know the foul was on Maddox. Oh, they just got, they just put a double zero on. Right, yeah. perhaps. Second yeah. shot, no good. Rebounded there by Lucas. As Lucas brings it up just a little bit there as Gia will slow it down just a little bit. 836 and counting. Gia will give this to Klumok. Klumok has a wide open lay. Here's a layup. Good! And falls down is Klumok with no call there. I can't tell if that was a foul there or not. We'll go with the officials because they are certified and can officiate the games. Way to bail yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best way I can do that, John. Yeah, absolutely. Four point lead for the Lancers, 8.09 to go. Here's a shot here and that is good there. Tolson gets the layup. Yeah, he's making a living doing that. He doesn't need to do that too many times. He hit the wall pretty awkwardly. He's kind of gingerly walking back the other way. As Klumok tries to drive in, and you have a foul occurring. It's going to go against the Lancers. Only their fifth team foul is. I think you have. If Kovic. Elize gets the foul there. That is on Elize. That's his first. It's going to be central basketball. Max to inbound it. Looks for Mims. He does. Oh, and loses it is right away as Mims. As the Lancers will try to get something. It's blocked there, but it's rebounded there by Mark, and that goes in. And looking at the stats for the for the Lancers right now, it's pretty even spread score-wise. Gia for two, rolls off the side of the rim, and no good. That was a good shot taken there by Gia, just is not able to go in. Dead even in rebounds at 11 right now. Biggest lead of the game, though, for the Lancers of eight. As Taylor will give this off to... Trying to see who that was. Lusic. In the post there is Tolson, and he will get it to go. You know, and that was one guy that coach talked about, Tolson and Mark, and, and, and Tolson right now has eight and puts the lead at 10, biggest lead of the night for the Lancers. 30 to 20 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Mabes tries to drive in and will lose. It's going to stay with the wrestlers, though, as it's exactly seven minutes to go. Jesse White returning for the... Rustler lineup. L Triple C by 12 over Casper. 5.25 left to go in that ball game. And Wyoming yesterday falling just short by three. I know you were looking at that a lot last night during that Fremont County game. White will give this to Lucas. Lucas pump fakes tries. It gets blocked there by Mark. Gets his own rebound though. Mims pump fakes three. Almost had a lane but will lose it. it was one of the Lancers tips it. Mims two hits the shot clock and that's going to be Lancer basketball, I think. Or is it going to be a foul? Yeah, they're going to call a foul, and that was crazy because Mark got so high in the air, he made him adjust his shot and shoot it into the shot clock, like you said. But then they get a foul out of uh, Melisic and bails them out, essentially, because that shot, like I said, was altered by the high jump of Tom Mark and would have hit the shot clock and been a turnover, but as it is, it goes as a foul. Mims this season, 71.1% for the free throw line, averaging 11.1 .1 points per game that first shot. No good there. Guys, got to get these. Gotta get, here's a stat here for John as 
on our left side, there's one basketball stuck between that shot clock and the pole. <laughs> and on our right side, there is not a single basketball. So something maybe look for is Mims' second shot. No good there, rebounded by Mark. So Mims goes 0 for 2 at the free throw line. And Central now 2 for 4. They're only 33% from the field, while the Lancers are 62%. You need those free throws for sure. As Kovic will pass this to Tolson. Tolson tries to drive in for a two-point shot. No good. Rebounded there by Gazin. Gazin doing a pretty good job in that post trying to get those rebounds. It's his third of the night. White kicks this out to Mims. Here's a three-point shot. No good. So Gazin tries to go for it and will lose it as him and Mark went for it. And Gaza is the last one to touch it. You know, and Mark, who has got a tremendous elevation, a, a vertical, he couldn't get jumping because Sebastian kind of leaning on him a little bit from behind and got away with it and didn't let him get jumped in the air, but nonetheless still didn't get the rebound. And Eastern with a 10-point lead brings it back the other way. No score with now a minute in with no score. 6.02 to go in this first half. Taylor, here's a lob to Mark. It's no good. And it's going to be a central fast break. Mims drives in for two. No good. Gaza try to get the rebound. No good. And here's an easy bucket for Mark. Mark, that was easy. And he's going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, there's a flush of epic proportions. Sims the foul. Mark has 10 now. And the Lancer lead is a dozen with 547 left on the Pepsi scoreboard and a full timeout coming your way. And we'll take on one with them. Lancers are leading the Rustlers 32 to 20 with 547 to go. You're listening to 881 Rustler Radio, streaming at rustlerathletics.com. Back here on Rustler Radio, 32-20 your score in favor of the Lancers as Mark got a full court pass, flushes it in, one foul there. That was committed by Trey Sims. So Mark will try to get his second shot here, almost already at his average as that goes in. It's only three points away from it with 11 on the night. 13 their biggest. Gia tries to drive in, kicks this to White. Is this three good? It is! Catch and shoot works for Jesse White on that one. Second three of the night for J-Dub. He only has six of the night with just two threes. 33-23 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Taylor will give this to Tolson, guarded by Sims. Tolson tries to drive in, kicks this out to Ikovic for three. No good. Long tries to get the rebound. Gaza will tip it. Make sure White can get it, and good job there by Gaza just to tip it to, for a central wrestler. Sims, is this three good? You bet! Right there, Trey Sims gets a three, and it pays off the lead cut to seven. Yeah, back-to-back -back triples, six points, cutting that 13-point deficit down to that seven, as you mentioned. Taylor, over center court, guarded by White. Central four of eight from the arc now, heating up a bit here in the late stages of the first half on the Pepsi scoreboard. As now Tolson has it top of the arc, guarded by Long. A nice pass there as Ikovic doesn't get it. Rebounded there by Gaza, and we have 4.33 to go, down by seven. Long, Euro step, kicks this out to Sims, who gives it to Gia. Gia for a three. No good, hits the back of the rim. It's going to be rebounded there by Taylor. As Tolson gets a long court pass. Tolson for two. That is it and good. What a shot there. Yeah, you can't play any better defense than Jesse White did right there. And he just got more physical and knocked it down. As Gia will give it to Gaza, Gaza to Sims. Right back to Gaza as Gaza will get fouled, and he's going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, that knocked right back at his breadbasket. He did well just to glove it to get it back up, and foul is on Tom Mark, which will be his second personal foul. And Central will be in the bonus now for the rest of this first half. 
Yeah, I have eight fouls on them. They only have seven on the scoreboard. As Gaza this season, 52.9%. First one in and good for this one. Three points for Sebastian Gaza off the bench. Doing a good job on the board side of it, everything as Gia out, Klumach back into the lineup along with Sims, Long, White, and Gaza, who's at the stripe with 407 left, down eight on the Pepsi scoreboard. Second shot for Gaza off the back of the rim, no good. Rebounded there by Taylor. Good box out by Taylor. As Tolson will just get it and take it over CWC's logo. Taylor. This game eerily similar to the girls game. Is that shot there? No good. Hits the front of the rim and will be rebounded there by the wrestlers. In that it gets a big lead, then not a big lead, and then kind of like how it went for Central against Casper the other Saturday afternoon. Gaza gives this to Sims, who kicks it to Klumach. Klumach tries to drive in, will lose it. Klumach looking for somebody in a timeout taken by Orange. Yeah. Did they did they say White said timeout? Jesse says, I didn't say timeout, but they're going to give Central a timeout. Worst case scenario is you give a turnover up right there. So I think you just take the timeout. However, that'll put Central with three left for the remainder of the ball game. I think if White doesn't like, I think that is the right call, though, however, because, I mean, they did have, Klumach was on the floor. He was looking for somebody. I think he was looking for White, but the official whistles it, and it's going to be a 30-second timeout taken here by the wrestlers. As on the night so far, pretty spread out for the wrestlers. White leads with six with two threes. Got Gia with four, Black Bear with four. Sibs hitting a good three. Gaza gets to the free throw line with three points on the night. Gets a layup in and goes one for two at the free throw stripe. You got Marco already with 11. You got Tolson with 10. And then kind of pretty spread out from there. Four seconds left in Cheyenne, L Triple C, 51-38. First half or? First half, gotcha. yeah, four seconds left in the first half. 51-48, LCCC out in front. And something that, it was a while ago, but Schmidt says this is a pretty wide open region. If I mean, he said Western Wyoming, but Western Wyoming gets beat, so who knows what this region's gonna look like well, it's as it gets developed. Battling and oh, another turnover. As that's gonna be Yori for the layup, no good. It, or excuse me, that was good. Yeah. For a second there. <laughs> Got to get some better eyes, John. I've been struggling with my eyesight lately, but wow. <laughs> I mean, you saw that one go in. It has Sims going to have top of the arc. We'll give this to Wong. Wong gets it to Klumach, who gets it right back. Who gets a screen from Gaza. Klumach tries to drive in, kicks this to White. White dribbles in, gets to the charity stripe, takes a two-point shot, rolls to the right side. Gaza with the rebound. It's going to be Lancer basketball as Gaza, I think that got tipped out in Gaza or... Did they just change it to central? It is. Yeah, it went out. He pointed at uh, Toldson, said off black right there. So. Oh, okay, gotcha. I just saw the official point to Lancer basketball. Long gets the inbound pass. That was inbounded there by White, and it's going to be stolen there. I think he was pointing at a Lancer more than pointing Lancer basketball. He was saying out on on this gentleman right here. Oh, gotcha. Where, where he was pointing. So. And for the Lancers, you're seeing Swan enter the game from Casper, Wyoming is. Ikovic. Yeah, I thought if Kovic traveled Tra before he took off down the lane, but they're going to get him a foul instead. And it's going to be bonus now for the Lancers and Central for the remaining 240 in this first half as you're going to see Maddox enter the game. You're also going to see Black Bear into the game. They give Trey Sims the foul, his second. Seventh team foul, seven on each side, in fact. Ikovic looking for his first points of the night. First one is up and good. 27 to 38 in favor of the Lancers with 2.40 to go on the Pepsi scoreboard. Lancers 5 of 8 from the free throw line, 63% for the game. As we'll have one more shot here. Ikovic, I have him for 100% free throw shooting. So either not many free throws or he's just a phenomenal free thrower. <laughs> and he goes 2 for 2 right there, 100%. Stays at 100% on the season for sure, keeping that average where it's at. Back to a 12 point lead. 39 27 on the Pepsi scoreboard, Clue Mock top of the arc looking for somebody we'll give this to black bear black bear back to maddox who gives it to klumach gaza tries to set a screen for klumach klumach here's a floater good he is so good at that 
Little one-hand floater in the lane. And especially when it comes off a screen, too, I've noticed. Gaza gets credit for the screen assist, even though that's not a stat, I don't think. As you're gonna see Tolson drive in, and you got a foul on Central. And it's gonna be a one, one and one opportunity. I'm trying to see who that foul was. It's on Gaza, he's already got three. Yes. He has three of the eight for Central right now. Tolson at the line. And Sims, I believe, also has three, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the thing with Gaza. He kind of gets into early foul trouble and then has to take some time on the bench as that shot is no good. Rebounded there by Gaza. Sims, by the way, with just two personal fouls. Thank you for the correction. I thought it was marked for three as White drives in. And he's going to be fouled. And White, for a minute, looked like he was holding his wrist, but... Seems to be all right. Tolson was already leaning backwards when White got to him. They're going to whistle him for the foul. They don't call the flop, but he was leaning backwards pretty good as they were headed that way, and Jesse White will go to the line. Jesse White having 82.6. He's a pretty good free throw shooter, almost averaging 20 points a game for the Central Wyoming Rustlers. 37, his career high as a rustler. Only down by nine of the wrestlers with 154 to go. Again, they still have, they got 21 minutes and 54 seconds to do something. First shot is in. Seven for Jesse. Cuts the lead to nine. Just under two minutes left to play on the Pepsi scoreboard first half. Again, on Saturday, your wrestlers will take on Western Wyoming. Girls 2.30, the boys will play at 4.30 on Saturday against the Western Wyoming Mustangs. As White will try to get his second shot in. Accidentally marked it already as good, and it goes in and good. Now it's an eight-point lead for the Lancers. As you got Ikovic with the ball, we'll give this right back to Taylor. It's kind of been that, as Joel would say, accordion lead. Just keeps expanding and contracting. Yeah, just he's going to want it more as this first half to win. It was guarded by Black Bear with nice defense right there. It's going to be a travel by Bisball. Yeah, Bisball gets the travel right there. Yeah, he got some contact on the baseline and got a little happy feet. And they'll call him on that. A good, that was just good defense there by Yehi Black Bear as White will bring it over the CWC logo. White gives this to Black Bear. Takes the pass, tries to drive in. It's going to be a foul. It's going to be two free throws for Black Bear. Getting to the line, Central 5 of 8 as both teams huddle up under their bent basket underneath there. Black Bear averaging almost 10 points a game. Gets 9.1, 5.2 rebounds per game. Foul goes on Bisbaugh. Got the turnover on one end to commits the foul on this end. You know, for the most of our marketing department has vacated for other jobs here, but it, the marketing department needs to look into making some ninja headbands for the crowd to wear, a little fundraiser. I would totally be a part of that brunch. <laughs> Broadcasting with one on my head, that first one doesn't go in for Blackberry. Blackberry shooting almost 60% from the field, but he doesn't do he doesn't take threes. He's more of a post player. From what I have gathered from these stats and have seen him play is that second shot off the front of the rim, no good, and you're gonna see gonna get another one. Oh, he is gonna get another one. Yeah, lane violation on the Lancers. As I think Taylor is now 0 for 4 when there's a dead ball and trying to go for a, just spinning the ball and trying the, to go. The extra shot. <laughs> Practice makes perfect, John. Third one, and it is now good. So Black Bear goes one for three. Yeah, costs him a point. Lucas back into the ball game for Central. Gia back in as well. Again, both teams in the bonus with 1.23 to go as Taylor will get the inbound. Central will shoot two on each foul in the remaining buck 15. As you've got Swan, Swan gives this to Bisbaugh. Bisbaugh will give this right back to Tolson. Tolson will pass this to Ikovic. Kovic drives in, tries to kick it out to Bisbaugh. Bisbaugh to Taylor, or Taylor for three. That's good with five left on that shot clock. Five points now for Taylor under a minute left. White finds a lane, kicks this to Klumach, who just tips it to Gia. What a play there. Gia for a floater. That's, I think, an easy travel call there. I don't think so. He had it knocked away. He grabs it and takes two steps and scores it. I 
I disagree. I mean, it looks worse than it, it was, but they're going to call it nonetheless. But I think that that one should have been a central bucket. As Taylor will just take it himself, coast to coast, works out. Same two steps Gia just took, only it didn't get batted around to look different. Yeah, from my view, it looked like he traveled. I, I, I saw the feet often, but I didn't see where the ball, I saw where the ball was at the beginning and the end of that. As Gia has the ball, will kick this to Klumach. Klumach gives it to Maddox, who's at the center logo. Maddox gets a screen from Lucas. Here's a three-point tip. Is that good? In and out. And it's going to be Lancers with the final shot here. Under 10 seconds to go. Tolson gives this to Swan. Swan going to take a three, misses everything. Lucas with Jack Klumach getting it. And it's going to be how your first half ends here. The Lancers up 44 to 32 in the end of this first half. Yeah, biggest lead has been 13, and they push it real close back to that. Gia talking with the official about, hey, why'd you call me a travel <laughs> as they walk off the court at midcourt? Not much you can do about it now for sure, but 12-point uh, advantage right now for Eastern Wyoming. And you have Mark now talking to the officials about something. Not sure what that was exactly, but we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a break here as there's a 15 halftime, 15 minute halftime intermission here. You're listening to Wrestler Radio on 88 one 44, 32 in favor of the Lancers. And we're back here on Russell Radio 81, 44-32, your halftime score. We're here with head coach for the women, for Lindsey Farrigan. I kind of just want to start with uh, Chevelle Boy. I think yeah. she had a fantastic game just coming off an injury, too. I mean, she was taking some falls. She was getting fouled pretty hard. I think overall she had a pretty good game if you had to give a player of the game to somebody. That kid works her butt off. Uh, when you have kids that, you know, they haven't been playing for a few months and then they just come out and they are giving you everything they have. They're doing all the little things that you could possibly ask her to do. Credit to her. Uh, she was huge. I love having her back. Um, she plays way bigger than how tall she is. How important was the start? I mean, they just kind of jumped on you quick. You battled back, but it just like never seemed to get to a point that it, 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 it takes so much energy to come back. Yeah. It's hard to get over the hump type of thing. And the start, I think, kind of 
duped you guys a little bit tonight. When my team doesn't come out with energy, that's what happens. Um, they said it themselves. They said it at halftime. They said it after the game that their energy was in spurts and it started in warm-ups. Um, I have no control of that. <laughs> so when it's, you know, them that are deciding when they're going to want to play, it's on them. Um, I think we, we got hurt a little bit with Alexis and Liv offensively. I don't think they were anywhere to be found today. And then defensively, we had some moments where the full team, we just, we weren't defending. Well, it went, at, for the longest time, it was either the shot went straight in, no no rim, bottom of the net, perfect shot, or it didn't touch anything. There right. was kind of no in-between tonight right. as well. And that, 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 hurts, that hurts a flow as well. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, you know, it just, it started in the beginning. I mean, when we don't have energy, we've always known as a team, what we talk about is coming out with energy. And when, you know, they don't come out that way, that this is what they're going to expect. Um, and I also tell them, like, I'm not going to save them. I'm not going to call timeouts because I think they have to learn from it. They have to grow and they have to figure out how to get themselves out of that hole. My timeouts don't help them. So it's it's on them. Several, it, so go ahead. Wyatt. Oh, I was going to say, it seemed like in that third and fourth quarter, you guys kind of had something going there yeah. where you're closing that lead down. And it, obviously you kind of talk about that spurts of energy. But what did you see in that? that moment there when you guys did bring that lead down that maybe could be utilized in the next upcoming games? It was when they had energy. I mean, we've been a team when we have energy and everybody's on the same page, we can battle, we can compete, we can, you know, take a win if we want to, but it's a want. And it's, it's something that, you know, we've battled all year for freshmen to understand, like, you have to be consistent. You can't have one day where you want to play and then one day where you're like, uh, I'm just here. Look ahead, Western coming in on Saturday now. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a battle. We're pretty much the same team. Um, we're competing, and then, you know, we end up losing by 10 or 12 to teams that we're playing. Um, it's just a matter of them wanting wanting to, wanting to be good. Uh, at halftime, one of my questions were, why are we afraid to be good? And everyone as a whole. Is this... It ain't a must win because your season doesn't end if you don't, but to achieve that seeding yeah. and thing, this is a kind of a, is it a must win on Saturday? I think it's a must win. Um, I think it's a must win for us to try to get on a roll, try to, you know, take some. I was thinking a couple of years ago when we went four out of six towards the end of the year um, when Essie was still playing for us. And uh, I think that's something that we're definitely capable of, but it's a, again, it's a will, it's a want. Um, and just trying to get them to be consistent. All right. Wyatt, anything else? No more questions. Just All right, Lindsay, thanks for coming up. Yep, thanks, Appreciate guys. it. Sir. Head thanks, coach, coach Lindsay Fearing of the CWC women's team as they came up on the short. And what did you have the final score to that one? Um, let me pull that up for you, John. I think I have it here. <laughs> It'll take me a minute, but I'll get it for you. All right. We'll take a break at the 744 mark of halftime. Eastern Wyoming up on the Central Wyoming College men, 44-32. You're watching Rustler Basketball and Rustler Athletics and listening on 88.1.
44-32 in favor of the Lancers with just about 5.30 to go in this halftime. And we'll give you guys some halftime stats here. I got your points for you as I do have the wrong score. But that women's final score, when I pulled it up for you, John, 80-63. to Okay. As that was the final score there. And some of your first half stats will start with the Lancers here as you have two players already in double digits. You got Tom Mark with 11. You got Kayden Tolson with 10. For Central, it's pretty evenly spread out, but Jesse White leading the way with eight points, followed by Jack Klumach with six. Yeah, biggest lead has been 13 right now. Central has had it as close as pretty much uh, four at, uh, I don't know about the, I didn't have, I don't have a time mark. It was 24-20 at one place, and then it's been, uh, what, 20 to 12 since then. Uh, to see them bolt out to the big lead. First half shooting central, 11 of 32, just 34%. Four of 10 from the arc, six of 10 from the line. Again, 34%. On the other side, Eastern, 56 and three is their percentage, 56%, 18 of 32. Two of eight from the arc. They also are six of 10 from the free throw line in the ball game. Rebounding, uh, total rebounding central, actually winning the rebounding war by my stats, 20 to 16 right now with uh, leading rebounder Sebastian Gaza with eight off the bench. Niehi Black Bear has four leading the way rebounding on the other side. Mark and Taylor with four rebounds apiece in the ball game, but uh, unofficial stats by my count, 20 to 16 the rebounding in favor of Central. First half turnover, Central had 10, Eastern had six. And uh, no ties, five lead changes in the first half, but not for a while. Yeah, they a lot of that in that first portion of that first half right there. Yeah, maybe 11-10, I think, Central's last lead in the ball game. I guess I can go look at that down the, down the, down the way here. Uh, it was 14-13 uh, was the last Central lead they had. And now trail by 12 as we go to the final 20 minutes of the basketball game. Halftime score from Cheyenne as uh, they're in the second half now. L Triple C by 15 over Casper College, 57-42. They've played two and a half minutes on the Pepsi scoreboard in the capital city. I think for Central, you just got to keep the, those momentums going throughout. As they had the kind of like what Lindsey Fearing said in her game, there was kind of some moments where they got it going and then. It kind of cool off a little bit. I think that's what I've seen from Central so far in this first, from that first half, and maybe hopefully it's not like that in that second half. Yeah, going to get some, uh, need to get some stops. Central will have the basketball to begin the second half, so they can maybe creep into single digits with uh, three or get it to ten on the first bucket, and then from there you just keep it at workable numbers and get, get more stops than you don't and, and see what happens. But as Coach said, he's, he needs some players to step up and play like, they are the players that he knows they can be. And I talked about it at one point. There was a stretch where I said, this is going to determine a lot of more minutes for players on how they're playing at that time. And unfortunately, that was kind of the end of that run at that point. So uh, it'll be interesting to see in the rotation who steps up and who stays on the court for the orange and black. Yeah, get it right is what Coach Schmidt said. And one more halftime stat with you. Jack Klumach head bends in the stands, sits at three. All right. We'll, we will we'll take a halftime right there. We'll market that. <laughs> Central basketball, when we come back, the second half, Eastern leading 44-32 at the intermission from Rustler Jim.
And we're back here on Wrestler Radio as if you are watching this game, you're seeing Joseph Fountain there, the pro one of the professors here at college with the headband. And we're now up to four right. people with headbands on. They <laughs> zoom out on that just a little bit. They'll see uh, Professor Kellner with one. Uh, I see uh, Rachel Hofer from uh, admissions has one as well. And there was another one sitting next to them. And I think maybe we'll see more headbands as uh, games <laughs> progress. And it just as uh, a tongue-in-cheek joke after <laughs> Jack wore it for 33 minutes and then had it declared illegal and had to take it off last game. It's funny how you remember how long that lasted for us. It's going to be central basketball. Because I asked the question, why is it legal for 33 minutes and then not <laughs> for the remaining 17 minutes, uh, yeah, last seven minutes of the ball game? As G.A. will take it. Is he going to start the second half? Does not get... The foul call he was looking for, that layup, no good. It's going to be Lancer basketball 15 seconds in. I think he should have got the foul call. There was a lot of contact out there that time as he took it to the cup. I'm trying to see who Gia is starting over in this second half. I can't get exact person who's not on the court. It's, I don't see Klumach. Or no, there is Klumach. And you have Gaza also starting this second half. Here's a two-point shot from Taylor. And rolls off. It's going to be rebounded there by Black Bear. Five rebounds for Niehi. Both teams start 0 for 1. Actually, uh, they go 0 for 2, and then Central turns it over. As it's going to be right there. Tolson gets the layup and good. And it's Saul May and Nate Mims who are on the bench who started in that first game. Well, that's Coach, I think, making a statement. Who is going to step up and play? Who are we going to see do that? And right now, he's going with Gia and Gaza. As Black Bear at top of the arc. We'll give this to Klumach. Klumach guarded there by Veen as Klumach tries to get in. It's going to be a traveling call, and Klumach doesn't like that, and it's going to be a, another turnover. A miss and two turnovers in their first three looks of the second half for Central. Not the recipe you're looking for when you're now down by 14 as Jacob Maddox checks back into the contest for Niehi Black Bear. And Coach Smith says you're good. Just taking a moment there as it's going to be Lancer basketball as told or excuse me it's going to be Yuri bringing it up court guard here by Wise he goes to the far side he's going to give this to Mark and it's going to be fouled and one bucket counts and it's already a 4 nothing second half score 48-32 on the Pepsi scoreboard 18-31 to go in half number two Jake Maddox getting the whistle Mark with 13, looking for 14. Retires average, and he will. How tall do they list Mark at? I have Mark at six foot six. Yeah, he seems a lot bigger than that, and especially the way he jumps. He plays above the rim for sure. Yeah, got that from the Eastern Wyoming website, John. As Gia drives in, is blocked. Gaza dunks it in. Great rebound by Gaza and the flush after the great block by Mark, as I just mentioned about his leaping prowess. He goes and shows it off and stuffs Gia. Yeah, so listen at six foot six. I think he just plays bigger than that, John. It's, he's got some jump there. It's Mark, he has a wide open three. That was on the line, though, and I think they're going to count it as two. They do. Yeah, just a two. And the Lancers have broke the half century mark in this game. Well, they list Gaza at 6'10", and he looks every bit of 6'8", 6'9", does Mark. As White, near side of the court, will be guarded there by Yuri. Gia going to try to drive in. He is just playing some physical basketball right now. Is Gia just hasn't been able to capitalize on it. Almost threw it away twice, but avoids the turnover. Klumach drives in, kicks it to Gia. Gia misses, gives it to White. White thinks about a three. He's going to take it. Going at the end of the shot clock buzzer. Yeah, they got that, but the pass nearly didn't make it happen. Pass makes the shooter, and that one made him adjust. He pump faked. Got it to go right before the shot clock. Approaching 17-10 to go in half number two. As Tolson drives in on Klumach, gets that two points, it's good. Very good around the basket. Caden Tolson, Tolson, excuse me. Tolson just passed his average of the game. As White will fall, Klumach gets it and will take himself. Nice ball movement there with him and doesn't get it and a foul on the Lancers. 53-37 on the Pepsi scoreboard. I'm good, I'm good. As you can hear under the hoop mic, <laughs> the, Mark. the unsponsored hoop mic, John. Yeah, it's still unsponsored. We got a lot of marketing ideas, sponsoring the <laughs> hoop mic, some uh, headband action. Yeah, we just, creative team, as that almost gets stolen there. 
from the Lancers as there was four on the shot clock. It's no good and rebound there by the Lancers as Mark almost steps out of bounds. Seven boards now for Mark as Taylor takes it the and distance. Black there! Yeah, they'll call they'll it. call it though because it hit the backboard, I right. think. I think that's the right call, the backboard. It touched the backboard right a split half second before Black Bear got a piece of it. Mim's gonna jump into the lineup. And Brad Schmidt just talking with the ref there and giving that T look like, keep it up <laughs> and we'll give you a technical. Yeah, Schmidt still talking with the official. It's gonna be Central Basketball 55 to 37. I'm trying to see who got that score from that last one. Taylor. Shot As that's blocked there by Mark. <laughs> As that was a good block there, and it's going to be central miss, and it's a backboard hitting feast here, John. Now they're going to call a technical. And who's that? Is that going to be on East? It is I on East. It's going to be on Veen for slapping the backboard at the uh, end of that, but had a good sound there on that unsponsored hoop mic there, John. Well, that was a swat at the apex by Mark. As I told you, the kid can leap, and he swatted that one right at the peak of that flight. Fiend's also listed at 6'6", and had pretty good height on that as Jesse White knocks that first shot in. All right, that's all he gets at that free throw line. 16, the biggest lead as it's cut now. Now, I guess my question is now, John, they're going to take this from the eastern side. Wouldn't they get it from the Rustler side if it was a technical call, or is that the right thing to do? I don't think there's an advance the ball feature that goes with the T. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you there for the clarification, John, as Wyatt will give this to Mims, who gives this right to Maddox. Maddox inside the arc, but will give it to Gia. Gia drives in for two, no good. And if I'm not mistaken, he's 0 for 3 right now when he tries to drive in. As you got Klumach going to check right back into the game. Mark two rebounds from a double-double. Tolson misses everything. It's going to be rebounded there by Maddox. Maddox tries to push the pace a little bit. You're going to get a... I think you're going to get a double dribble call as Max just mishandled just a little bit. Going to see Davis Richard for the first time for Central. 6'3", sophomore out of Frederick, Colorado. Three-point sniper. As you mentioned, that three-point, 31.6 for three, averaging four points a game. And now you have a... Didn't want to put the shot clock at 30 as it was not at 30. Uh, Tis now. Now a lot of shot clock talk from the women's game and the men's game right now. 55-38, Lancers looking for a potential 20-point lead. Taylor will give this to Mark. Back to Taylor, Taylor has a drive, he's gonna kick it to Veen. Veen tries to drive in, gonna be fouled and won. Nice, tough move by Veen, he got Klumach in the air. Gets the foul out of Jack and Veen count the bugger. They're not gonna go against Jack, they go against Black Bear. And that's his third, so Gaza and Black Bear now at three fouls, if I have that memorized correctly. You're looking at Black Bear three, Gaza with three, and that's the only, just a pair of them with three. Central with two fouls, as that is no good by Veen, as they are down, down by 19. Mims will bring it up court, gives this to Richard. Richard gets a screen from Black Bear, gives this to Klumach. Klumach guarded there by Taylor, who will give this to Miller. I think it's the first time we're also seeing Miller in this game too, John. Yes, it is. Looks, thought about a three, was Richard as Mims will get a three. Nothing but the bottom of the net, cuts the lead back to 14 after getting up to 17, matching that largest lead that they've had a couple of different times. Was, now I have a one point miss, I'm missing a point somewhere, so we'll go off of you, Jonathan. Here on out, Mark gets that shot, and what a shot there. I think that could have been a foul, but they do not give it to Mark. Yeah, he goes tobogganing across the floor on his back to amplify your point, and Central's going to throw it away. And now you're going to get Klumach on the foul. Yeah, he's trying to make a steal, and now you have Samas on the floor. Yeah, he kind of took Samas out a little bit Samus, there. thank you. And he's Chris, Chris is up, but he's... Not 100%. Yeah, it just takes him on, but he's walking just fine. Central now with three fouls with 14.41 to go in half number two. First personal on the headband. And nothing yet from the officials. <laughs> Four people in the stands with headbands. Yet. Yeah, but we'll probably get the 33 minute mark there, John. We'll, we'll find out. 
As you're going to have Tolson near side of the arc, looks for Fiend, does. He's guarded by Richard. Richard guards Veen as Veen misses that layup. Rebounded there by Gaza and almost stolen there by Veen. 11 boards for Sebastian off the bench with his five points tonight. And Miller will lose it and it's going to be stolen by Veen. Veen, Euro step for two, misses it. Rebounded there by Klumach as Klumach is going to try to push to space. Three on two of the wrestlers. Klumach going to take himself coast to coast and foul. Jack will go to the free throw line. Klumak, 71% from the free throw stripe this season. Almost shooting 50% field goal wise, John. Like to see the Klumak family on sophomore night if they make the trip from Oregon decked out in headbands when they come. That, we got all, <laughs> no, we just all wore well, headbands. I think we here, might John. have more headbands showing up the next few games as Klumak <laughs> knocks that one down. Got headband night or something, John. I mean, we're just coming up with ideas left to right, John. None of them good, but <laughs> I mean, they're catchy though. Ivkovich yeah, checking back in. Also, Yuri back in for the Lancers. So lead is now to 17. Still, I have it here at 18, so I'm missing it somewhere. Clue Mock misses that second one. It's going to be rebounded there by Yuri. As now you have Zamas gives this to Ikovic. Ikovic misses. It's going to be rebounded here by Clue Mock. Kumak going to just slow it down for a minute as he picks it, his dribble up, gives this to Richard. So down 15 with 14 left. There's going to be a little urgency going on here. Klumak gets a screen from Gaza. We'll kick this out to Richard. Richard goes baseline, gives this right back to Klumak. Klumak tries to drive in for two, doesn't get it, as it's going to be a scramble for the basketball, and they're going to call it. No, they do call Lancers get a timeout call as Gaza comes up the, from the floor with it. Ivkovic alertly got the rebound and calls the timeout. I think the timeout that was actually called by Yuri. They pointed to Yuri who called the timeout there. But Heads up nonetheless as coach asking for clarification on a short one or a long one. Wrestler Volleyball hosting a camp for kids K through 12. It'll be February 16th and 17th at Rustler Gym. Come get volleyball instruction from the ninth place team in the Juco country as well as Instruction from a lot of all Region 9 performers and an All-American email volleyball at cwc.edu for camp info. That volleyball camp, February 16th and 17th, volleyball at cwc.edu, the email address. And, John, looking at the stands, you see some Shoshone football players who won the recent 1A nine-man championship. As we have 13.36 to go, 59.42 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Central going to put some pressure now as it's going to be inbounded here to... Salamis. Salamis will take it over center court. And he's going to go coast to coast. Is it good? No. It's going to be right out of there by Miller. As Miller getting a little bit of pressure, but ball handling plays into his favor. It's almost stolen there. It is getting stolen now as Tolson will drive in, kick this out, and mishandled there from Swan. Or excuse me, that's Ikovic. Kutenik will give it back to Salamis. Samus, Samus back to Kutenik. Kutenik for three, no good. Gaza goes for the rebound and that did not look good, but Gaza gets up and is okay. Did he corral the rebound or did somebody else get No, that? somebody else corralled the rebound. He okay. just fell down there and we got a foul on the Lancers. If it was him, it would have been his 12th as you see Gia and Maddox checking back in on the television screen. Spectrum Cable TV 189, also on rustlerathletics.com to watch Rustler basketball, and we'll get a timeout on the floor. And big thanks to our crew, Riley Bouillon, and oh, they don't say timeout. And Christian Corona, our camera people up here in the box tonight. Jackson Morris doing this directing work as Mims will miss that two point shot, and it's going to be Lancer basketball. Toltson with his third board, 17 point lead, 12 35 left on the Pepsi scoreboard, second half. Plenty of time, but probably got to get something started here. As G is guarding Tolson who backed up. Here's a three-point shot. That is good there from Ikovic. Nothing but net. Yeah, pretty good sound there from that unsponsored hoop <laughs> mic there, John. Klumach baseline here drives in, tries to go for two, and will get a foul call, I think. You know, a lot of driving attempts, baseline. Klumach does. G tries to go in from the top of the arc, and I think that's the first foul, I think. If I'm not mistaken, that it's coming from a drive-in. Yeah, Kurtinik, the foul. Klumach back to the stripe. As Klumach, right now, seven points in this game. Had six in the first half. 
So that it's 62-44, but that one's short. Blumach now two for three, or excuse me, one for three from the line. As you're going to see Jesse White enter the game for Mims. Do you have Niehi with seven? I have Niehi with five. Okay, so that would be... Well, you have it at 44. I had a two for him, and I uh, didn't think that that was the case in the second half. The second shot goes in good, so Klumach two for four in this game at the free throw line. Yeah, down 19 with 12 left. Need to stop defensively for the Rustlers. White guarding Yuri. He's going to give this to Ikovic. Ikovic gives it to Tulsa, who backs in on Klumach. Tulsa in the key, and you have an offensive foul, and there's your first stop, John, that you were uh, talking about. That is just the seventh turnover of the ball game on Easter. They have taken care of the Rock tonight. That'll be their seventh turnover. Yeah, I've taken it very well since these two teams were pretty close up. Fourth personal foul, by the way, on Toldson. And is he, does he check? No, he, I think he stays in. No, he does. He has to get checked out. Yeah, Mark, I think, is going to check him out here in a second. They'll get a turnover on Central. They're 16th. As here is a shot from Sama. No, he does. He passes this out to Yuri, who will give this to Toldson. Toldson takes a two-point shot. No good. Rebound there by Kumak. White, three, is it good? No. It looks like a line drive three there from White as that does not go in. As Tolson, oh. nice pass there from Yuri. How did he find him? Nice assist and a timeout called. And it's gonna be a full timeout. We'll take one with them. 64-43 in favor of the Lancers with 11.55 to go, or 11.15 to go. You're listening to Wrestler Radio on 88.1 and streaming at wrestlerathletics.com, Spectrum Channel 189. Back here on this doubleheader night, your lady wrestlers fall in that first game as the men try to avoid a sweep here. Final score of that women's game, 80 to 63. You see Professor Fountain on your screen with the Klubach inspired <laughs> headband. Again, four, yeah, you got four people now with the <laughs> signature head, ninja headband, we'll call it. I mean, it is tied in a knot, looked like a ninja. Well, that was a thing in the NBA for a minute, and they decided to ban it. And the NBA has not changed since of that happening. White, reverse layup will get fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line as Yuri just raises his hand, saying, that's on me. Good take. Now we just have to hit the free throws. Central 9 of 15 on the night. That foul is whistled on Yuri, his first. Oh, 9 for 16, so I must have missed something or... Yeah, I'm missing a point somewhere, so maybe that's where that 17 mark is from. White, first shot, that's in and good. 13 for J-Dub. Averages almost 20 points a game. As the wrestlers looking to get a win in the conference season as they have dropped their first two, one on the road and one at home. As that second shot goes in, as you heard that on the hoop mic. As now Lancers with the basketball as they are kind of pushing the pace just a little bit. As White and Yuri kind of take their time <laughs> crossing that center court. Mark kicks this out to Samus. Samus will take a three guard by Maddox. And that was some good defense there. Good take there too by Samus. This deal will bring it up court with 10.40 to go. 64-45 on your Pepsi scoreboard. Rebound number 12 by Gaza, by the way, to go with five points off the bench tonight. Gaza, floater, no good. Goes to the left side as he's looking for his own shot again and gets it. Patton is rebounding stats a bit. Seven, seven points, 13 boards. Three away from a double-double tonight, John, as now you have Yuri gives this to Mark. Mark will get 
fouled by Klumach. That looked all ball, but we'll give credit to the officials as they were the ones who are right on the court. We're now up here in the... That's what uh, Klumach is contending, that he had a pretty good shot at it, and uh, Mark's going to go to the line nonetheless. 10-12 remaining. Mark, 65.8% free throw shooter this season. is Still a lot of time left. Sorry to interrupt you, but still a lot of time left. Just need to get some stops on this end of the floor, and it may be going to happen here at the free throw line. Yeah, avoid some fouls. Mark's first shot is good. And maybe not. 65-47 <laughs> on your Pepsi scoreboard. As you can see also on the bottom of the screen, if you're watching this live stream, Second shot, no good. So one for two was Mark, and the wrestlers need to get some points and some stops. Gia tries to drive in. We'll look Ouch. for Gaza, but it's going to be a foul on the Lancers. Yeah, Mark and Gia both go down hard on their tailbones that time. Foul is going to be on Mark. His fourth. So in foul trouble, but maybe too little too late as Gaza comes out. Good minutes tonight by Sebastian. Seven points, 13 rebounds by the 6'10 sophomore from Stuttgart, Germany. Mark's going to leave, and Herman Milosic, uh, Milosic, sorry, Milosic will come into the ballgame. As again, Mark with four fouls. They're up 65 to 47. Central 68% free throw shooting team. Gia raising that average shooting just under 74%. Gia with four points in the game so far. First shot is good. And Gia getting some extra minutes tonight after talking with Coach Brad Schmidt. And I think he has used that to the fullest extent. With five points on the night. Less than eight to play in Cheyenne. L Triple C by 11, 79-68. Yeah, that women's game, if I'm not mistaken, was postponed. It was. And I'll find a later day to make that up. It's now it's 65-49, under 10 to go in this conference game for the wrestlers here at Rustler Gymnasium. Now you've got Ratenik, gonna try to drive in. Well, it's looking for Milosic. Is now he's gonna be fouled by Black Bear. As that's a pretty easy call. You can hear the smack from up here. Second year we're not on the floor calling the game. We're Get up in the stands, and we got immediate timeout. We'll take one with them. 69-49 in favor of the Lancers with 9.45 to go. You're listening to Wrestler Radio on 88.1. Streaming at WrestlerAthletics.com and Spectrum Channel 185, or 189, excuse me, from the Riverton and Lander area. Back here on 88-1 as Milosic is going to get that shot in and good as I have him for three points in this game. Yeah, three for three from the arc. From the three for free throw line, John? Yeah, that too, just that's, inside that's the arc. Here. Yeah. I mean, either way, the, well, he goes four for four now. The straight arc. Straight arc, I like that, John. <laughs> I wouldn't use it if I were you. Yeah, I tried that radial dial reference. Like I talked to you earlier, as Maddox takes that shot, misses everything. Gia tries to save it, but it's going to be taken right there by Yuri. Yuri can try to push the pace. We'll give this to Taylor. And now you got a travel call before Maddox gets the foul. Well, and you want to talk about telltale marks right now. Eastern Wyoming, that's just their eighth turnover. They have half as many as the Rustlers, 16. They've also out-rebounded the Rustlers by nine in this ball game. Not to mention out shooting them 52 to 33 percent. 
an eye on the Pepsi scoreboard with 9.22 to go. Max will give this to White. White tries to drive in. He's going to take a two-point shot. Hits the front of the rim. No good. G going to try to get the rebound. Loses it. And it's going to be Central Basketball as Lukovic was saying. Gia touched that last, but the officials say otherwise. As we are getting near that 33-minute mark, we'll wait to find the results if Kumak will take his headband off. As Kumak gets this inbound, 9.08 to go in this half. Gia, 4-3, short. Gaza with the rebound. Pump fakes, tries to get it in. Misses it again, and now you got a foul on Gaza as he went over the back foul coming. And that's his fourth foul now. And it's, it's going to be bonus for the Rustlers. I just noticed that. Both fives have four fouls right now. Black Bear and Gaza, four fouls apiece for Central. Down 18, nine minutes left to play on the Pepsi scoreboard. As, excuse me, Tolson will give this off to Milosic. Milosic for two, that's a nice spin away jumper right there. Yeah, Milosic, his first field goal of the night, he's got six. Max gives this to Gia, who's looking for Klumach, finally does. Give this to White. White to Gaza, is now he gonna take a three? Is that gonna go in? No good, Gaza tried. Almost had his fifth foul to end his night there, but saves that. But now you got Central down 69 to 49. And that's a offensive foul as Taylor just gave Maddox a huge push. Jake taking the charge down on that low arc. Black Bear, Mims, Sims back in, and we've got another timeout. 8.15 remains, time on the clock, game time. 69.49 Eastern by 20, we'll return after this on 88.1, streaming live at rustlerathletics.com. Back here as my mic was shut off, 69-49. The Lancers finally get to that 20-point lead mark, but there is still plenty of time for Central to get back into this ball game. As Maddox brings it up court, looks for Mims, he does. As Mims will try to drive in, looking for somebody he does. He's gonna get Sims, Sims passes this to Black Bear, dumps it! What a, what a good ball movement there, John. Great ball movement, one extra pass and the dunk by the former Lander Tiger. As that's gonna be a kick violation there on Klumach <laughs> as. Like a goalie in hockey, the kick save. That is that is hockey, I just, I was thinking for a second if, I mean it works in soccer yeah, too, I guess. soccer. As it's gonna be Lancer basketball, Klumach guarding Milicic and now Milicic loses it, it's gonna be central basketball, some stops coming in for the Rustlers. Yeah, they're now in double digit turnover land at 10. Lancers up in this second half, 25-19. Your score, 69-51. Klumach, layup, good! Now you need another stop if you're central. Got Klumach with 10 on the night. Jesse White leading away for the Rustlers with 14. As your Lancers just keep putting it into that post. Now you have, excuse me, Jukovic and he loses it. Mims. One on two, he's gonna slow this down just a little bit, he drives in. Maddox, 4-3, off the back of the rim, no good as now he, Black Bear gotta kinda have to watch his foul as I believe he's at three. Couple central players in foul trouble. As now you got a baseline drive here from Melissa. Here's a three point attempt by Taylor, no good, rebound by Black Bear. 
And another stop for the Rustlers. 7.7 7 boards, Niehi. And Klumach again with that one hand layup. And now we are at 69.55. Here's a potential run. You got a foul, it's gonna be, is it gonna be on the floor? Is it gonna be a two free throw attempt for the charity stripe? It's gonna be on Mims and it's gonna be- It is gonna be free throws. At the line time. First personal on Nate. Central's cut it to 14, as close as they've been in a while. At the 15.01 mark, nine minutes ago they were down 14, is as close as they've got now, and the lead has ballooned to as much as 21. And Taylor will miss that first shot. Taylor blows his average in this game. He is nine right now. But you still got other Lancers who are Thomas, Veen, Mark. Also Toldson back in. Toldson and Mark, four fouls apiece, I do believe. Do you have Mark for four? Yeah. I think you also have Tol you have Tolson for either three or four. If I'm not mistaken. I have him for four. Second shot goes in and good as he has broken the double digit barrier. Now you got three Lancers in double digit figures. Central has two. Klumach, gonna get that almost travels there. So he's looking for somebody. Of almost a five second foul. Black Bear will get it, gives it right back to Klumach. Klumach again with that floater, no good. Sims with the rebound and a foul on Ooh. Mark, and Mark is gonna have to leave this game. Insult to injury on that one as he went down awkward and hard on the Sims oh, gather. And I like what Tom Mark did right there. He just kind of got up, he applauded effort, and he's walking to the bench. He's not out there demonstrating crazy or anything. He's, just accepting his fate and taking off to the end of the bench. I like that. I admire that. He has played a heck of a game. 19 points, 8 rebounds for Tom Mark unofficially tonight. And he checks out with 6.17 left on his fifth personal foul. But uh, the kid kid can play. As yeah. Coach knew when he came into this, he knew that he was going to be one to contend with. And he kind of got the, the raw end of both deals right there. He goes to the ground hard and he gets called for the foul. But... Good sportsmanship as he just picks himself up and heads to the end of the bench. He even gets his own chair off the ground. To yeah, set he, up. He, he threw. He, <laughs> he did show a little frustration <laughs> on that bench, but Mark is talking with the coach and, like you say, took it well. And then when the bench came, it did not work out. Sims for that shot, it's in good. Now he played very well tonight. 19 points, eight rebounds, as I mentioned, and playing a lot bigger than he is, especially if he's actually only six six, like you've That's got him listed the, there. Eastern Wyoming website had and listen to him at 6'6". He does not play like a 6'6 yeah, he's player. More like 7'1", the height <laughs> that uh, he jumps and plays at. Second shot from Sims is good. He has five on the night. As something we didn't see in the last home game, some more wrestlers getting some points here. And Sims taking advantage of the playing time he's received tonight. He's got Veen with the ball, far side of the arc. We'll give this to Tolson. Again, Tolson in some foul trouble. Take that two-point shot. No good. Gio with the ball. He's going to try to push the pace just a little bit. He's getting some pressure there. He's going to give this to Klumach. Klumach thought about a three. He's going to get a screen from Black Bear. They get a three to here. It's out. a ten-point game. With 5.48 to go. Gia, this three is good! Takes the second to get in, and it finally does. Rattled around, and now a chance for Central to make some hay with Mark on the bench for the remainder of the ball game. Gia with nine points on the night unofficially, if I have that correctly. Tolson, guarded by Klumach. You have a 10-point game with 5.25 to go. Closest Taylor. they've been since the 15 minute mark, by the way. As this is going to be a pass, it's going to be a blocking foul on Black Bear As or Klumach. One of those two is going to get called. I think Jack came in at the last second right in front of the arc and is going to get this whistle his third. And it's a one and one now for the remainder of this half. Both teams in that bonus. As Brad Schmidt just asking what the ref saw there. It was a bang bang play. It's one of those you do it ten times, you're gonna get the call five times, you're not gonna get the call five times probably. As now you have Kretinik at the free throw line for a shot. Good, and he'll get another one. Kretinik with four points on the night so far. He's th two for three at the free throw line. So he'll get his second shot is 
up and good, and it's back to a 12-point lead with 5.18 to go. Lancers have hit 65% of their free throws, 13 of 20. Central 15 of 21, very comparable. Maddox gives this to Klumach, who's gonna get a screen from Black Bear. Klumach back to Maddox. Maddox looks for Sims, who does he'll try to drive in. Layup is no good, just misses it. Black Bear tries to get a rebound, doesn't go. As Samas comes up with it. Samas will get pressure from Giaz. Central trying to get some pressure. Sims trying to be aggressive. What a reach around the back. <laughs> that's not a foul because it was all ball, I think. If I'm not mistaken, that's not a foul. No, it, right it's all ball. Right over the top of his back. I mean, behind and over as he reaches back there to stealthily poke it away, but stays Eastern basketball. Shot clock at 15. I like Sims, how he's just playing, and it's going to be waved off travel call again. Like I mentioned, I like how Sims has taken advantage of the minutes he has had tonight. Well, that's what I think each wrestler needs to needs to do and ensure themselves some more minutes and possibly translate that into some success in a W. Yeah, Brad Schmidt, get it right is what he said as Central brings this up with 4.35 to go. We'll give this to Gia's Maddox. Hands this off to Klumach as Klumach tries to drive in. I believe that would have been a travel as Black Bear tries to get the rebound. He does and loses it as a tap there from Kretinik goes to the Lancers with a 12-point lead, 4.20 to go. Central only shooting 33% from the floor on the home floor. That's not a recipe for success, unfortunately, yet they're still kind of hanging around in this one. They've also had 17 turnovers. And they've been out-rebounded, uh, well, they've actually out-rebounded Eastern by nine. As you're gonna have S Sebastian Gaza check in this next dead ball. V will drive in, look for the two, gets it. And might have been in one as Black Bear got a piece of him. And I think Black Bear is now, if I'm not mistaken, is he fouled out? No, that was just a timeout. Oh. There was no, oh, okay, gotcha, didn't gotcha. call the N one. Coach Anderson there in the middle of the huddle calling that quick timeout with 3.55 left. 74 to 60, Lancers out in front on the Pepsi scoreboard. Russell Rodeo hosting a Johnson Clinic for calf roping, breakaway, goat tying, and barrels. March 11th through the 13th at the CWC Equine Center. A jackpot follows the, the clinic on the last day. Visit johnsonsportline.com for information or check out the CWC Rodeo page on Facebook. 74 to 60 in favor of the Lancers. You have one of the best scores for the Lancers marked out of this game, but Taylor's had a pretty good game so far as he has 10 points. You got also Tolson who's in some foul trouble as well. And he has remained in this game and has played pretty good clean defense since having that fourth foul. Blumach brings this ball up down by 14. Gives this to G, who's guarded by Veen. Maddox goes to tries to drive in. He looks for a shot. Can't get anything. He's almost at that five second call. Sims, here's Klumach. 4 3. No good. Rebounded there by Gaza. Gaza tries to give it to Klumach. He does. This is this two point good? And one! Klumach gets the and one opportunity here and can bring the Rustlers to an 11 point game. And now you have Klumach taking a second here on the floor. Gathering himself. <laughs> Rises and touches his head. Touch, touches his lucky headband. Yeah, he gonna have to go head for a minute. Yeah, he's still holding the back of his nog. Pretty hard fall here as Klumach will have to shoot one. 14 points for Klumach. He and White tied for game high at 14. How about Gaza? 15 rebounds by my tally, and there's a three point play. Now it's an 11 point lead for the Lancers with 3.33 to go. Maddox guarding Taylor, starting from that full court press. We'll give this to Kretinik. Kretinik guarded by Gaza, tries to drive in. Got to play some good defense. Oh, blocked there by Jack Klumach. As he gives Kretinik a stare. 3.20 to go. Or, no, yeah, it's all, it was all ball. I just wanted to make sure there's no foul there. As you're going to see Kretinik check out for Dikovic, Dikovic back in, 3.20 left, 11 point ball game. It's gonna be Taylor to inbound this for the Lancers, 3.20 to go, 74-63 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Their biggest lead has been 21, by the way. As Taylor will give this to Dikovic for three, and that is a tough shot to make if you are the Rustlers. Yeah, big 
three-pointer by the Lancers. Gia gonna try to drive in, kicks this out to Sims. Sims, long three, good! Gaza and Toldson tangled up and falls down. They both get back up okay. Back to 11, under three to go. Eight points for Sims. Samaz brings it over center court, gives this to Ikovic. Three here from Ikovic, and that's another three, and he is on fire hitting the last two threes. Yeah, he's got three in the half. He's at 11, back-to-back -back triples. As Klumach tries to drive in, no good, and a foul on Klumach. It's going to be going four, to the free throw line. Four on Jack, and that'll be Ivkovic going to the line. Schmidt telling his players just to calm down just a little bit. So they are down now 14 points, 80 to 66 on the Pepsi scoreboard. Well, this is going to put them three games below 500 overall, and uh, more importantly, at 0 and 3 in conference play, having played two of them at home. Yeah, and when you were talking, I think it was on the Wrestler Report show happening Tuesdays and Thursdays, you mentioned that as that first shot goes in, that Brad Schmidt just, you got to get all the home games and get steal a couple on that road. As Ivkovic gets that first free throw, second one. No good, and it's going to be Rustler basketball trailing 81-66. Under 2.30 to go. Gia guarded double team there as Maddox. Will look for Klumach, and Jesse White has not been in this game for a while. With your league scorer, Sims. Dribbles on the arc, looks for Maddox. Is this three good? No. And it's going to be rebound by the Lancers. It's going to be a kicking violation. It's going to stay with the Rustlers. Approaching 2.07 to go. Well, Coach, I think, like we said, kids trying to prove minutes right now. These five have been put a pretty good spurt out there for the Rustlers. Still trailing by 15, though, with 2.07 left. Yeah, this second half, the Lancers only have a three-point lead over the Rustlers. This is going to be inbound here to Sims. Sims gets a screen from Gaza. This three is no good. Hits the left, right side and bounces off to the left. And Samas will bring it over the court. Gia talking to the official about a push off on Samas, but... Here's a three-point attempt here from Ikovic, and it's no good. I know he's got the hot hand, but I'm not sure why you're hoisting that up 15 <laughs> early in the shot clock like yeah. that. This game is still open. Gaza gets two. And we are at 81 to 68. Gaza one point away from a double-double with 90 seconds remaining in the ballgame. As the Lancer's going to now try to slow this pace. Tolson with the ball with under 90 seconds to go. Tolson just, he's just gonna let this clock go down with 10 on the shot clock. Tolson guarded by Gaza, he's gonna take a long two. That point is good and that is probably the dagger. Yeah, that just late in the shot clock and buries one right in the grill. Max gives this to Gia. Gia will try a three point shot and misses the rim. It's gonna be rebounded there by Tolson under a minute to go. And now Taylor will get his. I think Cetra was looking to try to foul. As it's going to be Veen with the ball. We'll kick this out to Ikovic, who goes baseline. We'll try to get the two and misses it. As you heard him say, oh. And now 17 under a minute to go again. Tolson's going to drive in and just continue to add it. As Gaza will now foul out of the game. Great job off the bench tonight, Sebastian Gaza. He gets a round of applause. Well, a round of applause, I think, coming for Jared Lucas coming in, but a much-needed round of applause for Sebastian Gaza tonight. The sophomore, nine points, 16 rebounds by my tally tonight played, for the big fella. Played a really good game off the bench. I think one of his better games from yes. what I have seen Definitely. personally is that first shot from Tolson is good. 19 for Caden. As Tolson on his season, 13.4, so... Gets above his average. Casper's tightened it up with L Triple C. They have 45 seconds left in their game, and it's a five point L Triple C advantage. Klumach with the ball with under 30 seconds to go. He's going to look for Lucas, but doesn't. Maddox, here's a long two. No good. Rebound there by Lucas. Lucas trying to make something happen. Gives this to Sims. Sims baseline. We'll give it to Klumach. Here's a two point shot. That's good. 17 for Jack. Leads the Rustlers with 18.6 to go as Klumach 
sets the ball down as the Lancers will give it to Ikovic and they can just let this clock run if they decide to. And now you got Gia on the floor. Taylor is going to, I think, is he going to get called or is it going to be Gia? It'll be interesting to see where this one goes as now Gia and Veen have words. And this is going to be very interesting to see which direction this call goes. And it's unfortunate because they're, the game has been decided. This is just nothing going on here now, just chirping and... I think this, it's just a tough loss for sure. I think you can tell Gia was a little frustrated. And I think Central, for the most part, just wasn't able to connect their shots, but they played a pretty good game here and just not going on their side tonight. So the officials will confer here. Klumach looking at the officials, and now you got Klumach talking to some Lancers. You got Sims on the other side. Gia talking was sit, waiting for the officials and Gia and watching the replay online and the Gia had walked past the player in question Taylor and he kind of snaps back like something was said and then the next thing you know Tony's laying on the ground and that is basically what I saw now I obviously don't know what I heard I didn't hear I obviously didn't hear anything from here and uh, going to go on Taylor his second personal foul now it's a foul and just ends up being central basketball because it was on offense so basically a turnover and a player control foul yeah i don't know why we kind of do a foul like that there is 11.8 the game is pretty much decided well it is decided as Klumach will take a two and gets it in good and that's probably how your game is going to end the rustlers go 0-3 in conference play 85 72 it will be your final score that final buzzer has sounded off and the rustlers again take another fall. Yeah, now you just hope that everything goes clean through the handshake line after the end of the game got a little chippy in the last 15 seconds. Brad Schmidt leading the way, talking to kids and we're just kind of watching <laughs> this line go through is if you're watching this you're looking at Gia Gia's kind of moving check. up just a little bit he gives a handshake to the coach and checking over his shoulder and got one more player as he's now talking yeah. with one of you in this the, yep, is, Gia, this is now gonna, Gia's this, now Gia's kind of instigating yeah, it this has got to be de-escalated and uh it is but I I mean I I just said it you got to watch the handshake line to see if there's not something extracurricular coming up out there as a couple of players talking, just Davis talking Richard as and they yeah, you know, probably all know each other and lies and everything like that. Davis Richard talking out there, yeah, and then you have Taylor and White talking to each other in a friendly manner. But yeah, this one uh, could have turned ugly, but everybody cooler heads prevailed and it ends up. 85-72 Eastern victory in this one here tonight. And I think it's just a tough loss for Central. I mean, you had a lot of players, I think, stepping up in this game, John, it just didn't go their way in shooting-wise and statistical-wise. Is that, what's that final, that score in the Casper game right now? LCCC leading 95-90 with 28 seconds remaining in that ball game, so. We'll take a break here. We'll give you guys some final number stats and we'll Bring it back here, 85-72, your final score here on Wrestler Radio, streaming at WrestlerAthletics.com.
Wrapping things up here for Rustler Radio and Rustler Media 8572. In favor of the Lancers, the Central Rustlers drop their third straight conference game, third game in a row. And I think it's just a heartbreaking loss when you have players step up in this game. Yeah, and it was, I don't know, we'll talk to Coach Schmidt about seeing what he what he hoped to see. You know, he says it's get right weekend, you know, trying to right the ship after uh, the COVID break and everything else. And we'll see if they took steps in that direction in his mind. Obviously, you know, not ultimately not getting the win, falling 85-72, but uh, we'll catch the words from the coach as he's obviously a little closer to the program and, and uh, catch words from him here in, in just a couple of seconds as well as the post postgame show continues. Reminder that Central will be back at it again. I'll flip those around on you there, Coach. <laughs> as, uh, Central will be back at it again Saturday. They'll host Western Wyoming at 2 and at four o'clock and i need to go click on a button over here real quick and uh brad schmidt head coach and game ebbs flows shouldas couldas 85 72 your thoughts on it tonight i think eastern's a very very good team they're incredibly deep got a lot of talented guys got you know tough second year players in tolson and you know thasmus number three and milosh and you know, they just, uh, they played really well. You know, even got a guy like the number 32, Nikolai Urkovich or whatever. I, he wasn't even on our scout and comes in and just drills a couple threes when we're trying to make a run late that were just massive. It just, we're not we're not creating any breaks right now for ourselves by how we're playing and, and just our whole team morale, but teams aren't giving us any either. So it's just, it's a brutal combination right now. Well, 36% from the field I had you at unofficially. Is, they have us at 34.8. Is so. that their defense or is that just not a good shooting we're, night for we're, us? We're just, uh, it has nothing to do with shooting. It has everything to do with our, our mindset, um, our internal monologues that the guys are running in their own heads and as a coach, I got to try to figure it out. But right now, we are we are definitely not the team that we had pre snowstorms and COVID. Not even not even close. And so, I got to figure that out. You well, know, unfortunately, 17 turnovers. But I had you winning the rebounding award tonight, which I know has been an emphasis. Well, too. you know, the, 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 I will say this, man: the brightest spot we've had in a long, long time, and something that I have just been just losing sleep over and, and wanting so bad and so does coach Harrison and that was Sebastian you know yeah. Sebastian was just amazing tonight the fact that he had nine points 17 rebounds you know and was and was was a factor defensively and physically so I, I hope he can maintain that because we've been needing it and um, we're going to continue to need it as we play an elite lineup of bigs on Saturday I'm going to jump in I and I think Trey Sims also took I think took advantage with his minutes and I mean we haven't been able to see him a lot and just to finally see what he can do. I mean, you had, I think you had some players take advantage of the playing time they had tonight. Yeah, yeah, de definitely, for sure, Wyatt. I, um, I I couldn't agree more, man. I was uh, I was really happy to see Trey. Um, you know, I was really happy to see Tony. You know, he didn't shoot the ball great, but just his energy and the fact he had five assists and, you know, he's, he's, he's bought into playing the right way. It's just um, I need my horses to run, and my horses aren't running right now properly. So that's um, I got we got to figure that out. Doesn't get any easier Saturday. Coach Souza, Dane Prim, and company coming in. Another task in front of you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fighting Prims. Dr. Prim and Dr. Trost <laughs> and uh, Dr. Trey Pierce will all be coming to town. So, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be a lot of fun going against that elite group of bigs. I mean, Coach Sosa and Coach Cam down there, do a, they do an amazing job. Uh, but we haven't had zero success against them. And if we don't ride the ship in the next 48 hours, um, it's going to be a long afternoon on Saturday. All right, Coach, thanks for coming up. We'll talk with you uh, closer to Saturday. It's head coach Brad Schmidt. His team comes up on the short end tonight, 85 to 72. Wyatt, let's take one final break. We'll come back. We'll take a look at stats and wrap up the night. We'll do that here in just a moment. This has been Rustler Basketball on 88.1, streaming live at rustlerathletics.com.
Back here on Wrestler Radio again, the men falling 85 to 72 in this matchup here. As I mean, Brad Schmidt just talked about in the game and said Sebastian Gaza going to need to see him a lot more to play like he did tonight. I mean, he fouled out, but had, overall played a great game. He also well, you Trey hit Sims the nail on the top team. of the head with him with one of, if not his best game as a wrestler. Yeah, and Trey Sims, too, taking advantage. And you mentioned Gio just using that energy. I just not the way wrestlers wanted to go tonight. Now you got to win a couple more games on the road, which Brad Schmidt was, like, taking advantage at home and just wasn't able to do that. Well, and there's, it becomes a point where, okay, we're not worried maybe so much about standings as we are getting better with our team to get closer to get W so that we're playing our best when March tournament time comes around. And that'll definitely be a point of emphasis. Uh, Central f down by 12 and a half, 44-32. They get outscored 41-40 in the second half, fall by 13, 85 to 72. Jack Klumach, 19, Jesse White, 14. Sebastian Gaza, nine with 17 rebounds. Tony Gia had nine, three for Jacob Maddox. Niehi Black Bear, seven with eight rebounds. Saul May a couple of boards, uh, Jaron Miller uh, in the, the game as well as Sebastian. I mentioned that Nate Mims, two rebounds, three points. Jared Lucas had four rebounds in the ballgame. Lancers had four in double figures, 20 apiece by Toldson and Taylor. Uh, excuse me, 20 by Toldson, 19 by Mark, 10 by Taylor, 12 by uh, Ivkovic, five from Sama, six from Veen, two from Yuri, and five from uh, Kurtinik as they win it. Going away, 85-72. Largest lead was 21. Central got it back down to 10 in the last five minutes, but could get no closer as they fall. Final shooting numbers, Central 36% from the field, 8 of 22 from the arc, which isn't bad, 16 of 22 from the line. Eastern would shoot 52%, 32 of 62, 5 of 16 from the arc. They hit 16 of 14 free throws in the ball game, and that's how it ends. 85-72, an 0-2 night for the wrestlers. The women falling 80-63, to the men falling 85-72. Both teams back at it Saturday afternoon. They will host the Western Wyoming Mustangs. Ladies at 2, the men at 4 o'clock here from Rustler Gymnasium. Yeah, and going with that women's game, John Marley Albrecht, I think, had a really good game, too, getting 16 points and just was taking advantage of being able to play that push pretty well. You also had Chevelle Ball with 10, Alex Terrazas with 12, as they fell 80 to 63. But things are starting, I think, to come together now for both these teams. And not a moment too soon. They're going to need to. And for need the ladies, to. I think it's a, a huge game. Coach Lindsey Fearing said it's a must win Saturday. And you know we'll see what happens. And it's a must improve for the men, obviously as well as uh, we're late into the night we've got people we need to let go we thank <laughs> jackson morris our director amanda nikoloff our new media professor christian corona and riley bouillon for cameras tonight dory white running a camera in the previous game as well and uh we'll be back at you on saturday Wyatt, we'll miss you on saturday but uh we'll be back later on in the season hopefully yeah i got four games starting friday and my goal is to not lose my voice there you go and you've been, you've been and prepping it so yeah it should be good thank you for letting me join the broadcast again. absolutely for white barishka i'm john gabrielson this has been a presentation of rustler media 88.1 streaming live at rustlerathletics.com